Hello and welcome to our weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause, Sarah and I are going to be talking about why am I so moody in the perimenopause and menopause. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. One of the things I get on the helpline on a regular basis is women coming to me about their moods. They're worried about their mood swings. They feel maybe they're getting out of control. Um, they may find that they're getting moody and snappy with their loved ones, their colleagues at work, and they're finding that they just can't cope with it all. And they're wanting to know nice, simple, easy tips in order to help themselves. So, Sarah, from your point of view, when, when you're um, giving advice in health food shops, what, what's the sort of angle there? What sort of questions are you getting asked? I'm being asked uh, basically about people who feel really irritable and angry um, and that it's, you know, particularly when it's affecting relationship and people who maybe get a lot of mood swings. So people who feel exhausted and drained and low and then one minute, one minute and then the next minute they're just, they're really cranky and irritable because something small like the dishwasher has set them off. And that destabilizing um, mood is, can be quite frightening and, and again can just really affect people's relationships as well. So I suppose what I'm asked on the shop floor is, what, what people can be recommended on the shop floor to basically help reassure their customers and just help them regulate their mood so that it's not up and down so much. Yeah. Um, so do you think in the perimenopause, it's different causes to being in the menopause itself? What, what's your take on perimenopause mood swings? What's the likely well, triggers? I, 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 I definitely think it's that stage of early perimenopause when... Um, your estrogen levels can become quite dominant in comparison to your progesterone levels and that kind of profile um, can really give you a lot of irritable, angry moods, particularly that week before your period. Um, and in when someone's having quite a short cycle as well, that can be coming fast mm. and furious. And, th that, uh, and it's quite draining having mood swings that are up and down all the time so people can just find at the end the entire it's it's volatile but it's also draining on the energy mm -hmm. um and that that's that's and it it would be very much a low progesterone high estrogen kind yeah. of scenario i think what we find in the menopause and postmenopause is when estrogen levels start to fall that's the point where low mood again can strike and at that point you're hormonal balance, hormones don't just fall. There are times when you can get a sudden boost of estrogen. You, so one day you can be up, you can be really happy, and the next day you can be down in the depths of despair. And a lot of women really worry that there is something seriously wrong in that situation. Yep. You know, and I get the, 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 the one um, question I get is, Am I going mad? And the reason is no. It, you know, most times it's just because your hormone levels are, are going all over the place. So, for my side of it, what I tend to recommend would be, um, you know, looking after your blood sugar levels. It's a really common one, in, especially in, in the menopause. If you're not eating regularly, your blood sugar can dip, and it can literally fall like that. And I know for me that was a huge issue in the menopause. Um, I'm very small and I need to eat little and often to, to keep my blood sugar stable. And if I was, you know, even half an hour late with, with a meal, I could feel my mood just slipping very, very quickly. So for me, keeping my blood sugar stable was, was basically my saving grace. And also remember that dehydration will basically do... Um, the same thing as well. But I know that there can be other things going on in your life that can also cause the mood swing. So it's not necessarily always the hormones to blame. Just so, from having worked in shops myself and, and just advising, um, I always assumed that no one gets enough sleep. I, I just think mm -hmm. sleep is a huge factor because if you don't get enough sleep, 
obviously it's going to affect your mood. Your, it's going to cause your mood to fluctuate and, and you're definitely going to feel more irritable if you're tired and more drained. Um, when you don't sleep as well, it, it really affects how you see your body. So if you, um, they've shown that, studies have shown that women who sleep less have poorer body image. And that makes perfect they sense think, to me. Yeah. I mean, just think of that week before your period. Um, you eat more. So again, that's the blood sugar levels yeah. that you talk about. And it's the, um, always the tired. wrong foods, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's, the sugary, no. it's the sugary foods and the caffeine. No, I definitely don't yeah. want celery that week before yeah. my period. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, the other thing is just s managing stress levels because at the end Big of the day, if, if, if you're stressed all the time, if you're not looking after yourself, if you're not recognising that stress is really impacting you, um, again, it's self-awareness. It's um, if your mood, if you're flying off the handle um, with no notice, that can be alarming for you and for other people. But stress can really drive those kind of um, behaviours and triggers. Mm -hmm. um, so recognising that maybe you've a little bit too much on your plate, that, um, you know, you can't do all the jobs in one sitting. I, I really think... Um, just listening, being self-aware and being aware that you can't do everything and be everything to everyone is um, can be a real penny dropping moment for yeah. people when they're learning to manage their mood, um, particularly when the hormones are fluctuating yeah. crazily. It, you know, the perimenopause and menopause, it's a huge learning ground um, for us as women to realise what we can and can't do and what we want to do and also what makes us happy. And I know sometimes women in this particular age group, we have got work, we have maybe got children, we may be looking after elderly parents. So our responsibilities are just being piled on us at the whole time, at the same time that our bodies are trying to cope with all these changes. And I do sometimes think, you know, you're right, is that too much is going on at once. We get miserable, we get unhappy, and we get snappy. So there are a lot of things, though, that you can do. We can't change our lives very often. We can't just turn around and fly off into the sunset like yeah. I, I wished that, Ditch that I child. could do. I wish I could do on a regular basis. Um, but, you know, there are things like eating well, you know, make sure you keep your blood sugar stable. It's getting that rainbow on a plate is the easiest way to, to um, eat well. The sleep, absolutely, definitely. Exercise, you know, we, a lot of people say to me, I'm too busy to exercise. Exercise is so important because it releases happy hormones. Yeah. It, may, it lifts us up. And also, if you think about it, it's half an hour or an hour away from daily life. So it, it's a, a way we can shut ourselves off from the, the, the daily stressors as well. Stay hydrated, obviously. Do the deep breathing technique. It, you know, so many people tell me that this really helps when they feel that their, their mood coming upon them. So, and YouTube's fabulous, all these, you know, just click on it and you'll get lots of classes to teach you how to do the simple um, relaxation te techniques. And also that 30 minutes me time is worth its weight in gold. Um, and, you know, I had um, one lady came to me and she, she said that she started following my advice by having her 30 minutes me time. And she finds now that if she doesn't do it, her family basically drag her into <laughs> the spare room because they've benefited. They're not, yeah. they're not having a grumpy mum and a grumpy wife anymore. So not only does she feel better with that half hour, but it's made a huge difference to, um, to family life as well. So... And I know, obviously, shot-wise, there, there are things that, that you recommend. Agnes Castus. Um, it basically is one that I find really useful. Um, I had it here somewhere, but it's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, Agnes Castus is a herb, um, basically, that can really help balance the hormones, particularly in that scenario where you've got um, high estrogen and no progesterone. And um, but basically, it's one that you can kind of um, use to just relieve um, PMS symptoms and again it's that mood changing and the mood swings that yeah. might people might really feel um, the effects there. As long as you're not on any hormonal That's contraceptives yeah. and, and uh, hormonal medication yeah and of course things like magnesium B vits. 
B vitamins, yeah. um, vitamin D, because vitamin D is as much of a hormone as a vitamin. So that, ca that can be very impactful yeah. and supportive of the immune system, of course. And, um, and, and magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. Yeah. And water, water, water. Yeah, good. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Had, had a, as I've said before, we can chat for ages and ages. So I hope you found this one helpful. For those of you that have been in that mood scenario, what did you find helped you? Please share because there's plenty of women out there that are looking for tips and help. So and until then, I'll see you next week for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.